interesting guests to inform you on topics that affect us all. Operation 7570 is one of the longest-running radio programs of its type. It's been on the air since 1967 and brought to you by Apex Bank of Camden. Three locations in Camden, Big Sandy and Brewston. Today's program, after this. For more than 85 years, Apex Bank of Camden has built a tradition of local people serving local people. Although there have been changes over the years, this one thing remains the same. Hometown people that are your friends serving you every day to meet your financial needs. We want to see you grow and prosper. And when you ever have a need, you'll get personal attention right here at home, not in some far off corporate office. Number one in customer service. Apex Bank of Camden, Benton County's Best Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Operation 7570 on this Saturday morning, the warmest day probably we've had, the warmest morning we've had for a Saturday all year long, and that's a good thing because we really know that spring is upon us. A lot of spring things are getting ready to take uh, place. The flowers are blooming, of course. Uh, grass is growing. We'll have to do all that, but we'll get out and do some fun things like baseball and softball with the high school, but it's good to have you with us today, wherever you're watching us or joining us from today, WRJB, WRJBradio.com, or up on our Facebook page at WRJB. Jenna Patton joins us uh, this morning in our studios, and we're going to be talking about a program that you may not be familiar with, but we're going to give you all the information about this and, uh, you know, how you might become involved with it, and it's something, you know, that's been a especially to our school-age kids, and we think it's going to be an interesting half hour or so this morning. But uh, Jenna, my friend, welcome. Thanks for getting up so early. Thank you, and my voice... Hey, is, it can tell you can tell that the weather's changing. So <laughs> are you feeling better than a day I am or two? feeling better, and you can thank my uh, high school students yesterday. They were so concerned with my voice that they wanted me to just sit and relax and take a day to feel better. So. <laughs> Bless their hearts. Well, they that, had my best interest. Yeah, well, you and I were here before Luke got here this morning, and as soon as Luke walked in the door, is that you, Luke? And yeah, you taught that young man back a few years ago. I sure did. <laughs> well, it's great to have you with us. Thanks for giving up some of your Saturday morning. But first of all, Miss Jenna, give us some background about yourself, you know, where you grew up at here in Camden, a school, things like that, and where you are today. I graduated from Camden Central High in, oh, goodness, <laughs> 2006 <laughs> and I started at University of Memphis and then met my husband actually Lance uh, was in Camden and I was needing some chemistry tutoring and <laughs> he just so happened to be a chemist and through mutual friends uh, passed my chemistry final, quickly changed my major, <laughs> and <laughs> transferred to UT Martin, where I finished up with my teaching degree. And Lance and I got married in 2008, 2009, 2009, 2008. Oh, bless. It's so early. Sorry, Lance, if you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> and then I started teaching um, high school Spanish year when Miss Paula Hawkins retired. And a couple years after that, I got my master's in English as a second language. And I taught in Henry County for a little bit. And then I came back home and I have been teaching part-time high school Spanish and part-time English as a second language to preschool through 12th grade for the last seven or eight years. And I'm currently working on another master's degree in Spanish. Well, so. good for you, good for you then. English as a second language, is that becoming more prevalent in our society today as we move forward? It, it is. Um, in our area, we don't have a large population, which is why it's, it's a part-time position here. Um, but that is, I think that's going to change in the near future um, as we have different things take place in our country and in our um in politics so this is a this is a position that is not going anywhere <laughs> <laughs> well you mentioned your background in chemistry of course so if i had the pyrex apparatus with me today and i could set up all the equipment that we needed to could you uh, the hydrolysis could you break down h2o and give us water 
<laughs> if Lance is watching, he's laughing, I assure you. <laughs> I did a demonstration. I did a demonstration on that when I was a freshman in high school years and years ago. That goes back 50 years. And our friend, Dr. Mike Beloga, who had this program, he mm -hmm. was a chemist at DuPont, and he brought me all the equipment that I would need to uh, <laughs> set it up for a science fair project then. <laughs> it just took one semester of college chemistry to let me know that was not my calling in life. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do have a calling right now, and you do so much outside of the uh, Benton County Department of Education with the school system, which we are very, very appreciative of. And we have a program that we want to talk about this morning that uh, you and the fine folks at the First Baptist Church has started a few years ago. It's called the FUEL program. We're going to explain what FUEL means, what it's all about. So just go ahead and give us a little background. What is FUEL and how it helps kids in Benton County? FUEL stands for Filling Up on Emmanuel's Love. And it was started in February of 2008 by three ladies, Miss Glenna Wilson, Miss Ruth Dyer, and Miss Jackie Chadwick, who wanted to do, they had a passion for children, they had a passion for the kids of Benton County, and they wanted to do something um, to, to meet a need that wasn't being met. So they started talking to some teachers and realized that there were a lot of food insecure students in our school system. So in February 2008, these three women sponsored eight children in Camden Elementary in kindergarten. And they would drive to Sam's in Miss Glenna's van, and they would get food, and they would pack bags to send home with these kids every Friday throughout the school year. Fast forward to here we are, March 2022, and we are now serving 325 students all across Benton County. So where we started in just one school in 2008, now we are in every school in the county, um, including Head Start. We added Head Start um, just a couple of years ago, and we send food bags home on the weekends, every weekend um, throughout the school year, um, for these children to have have something to put in their stomachs until they come back to school on Monday morning. And this has been an eye-opening experience for me. I didn't realize what a need there was, um, especially until we hit the pandemic and schools let out. And we got permission. Uh, the teachers called these, the students that received these bags, they called their parents and asked for permission for us to deliver the bags. So we saw that these children, that this food was, was needed and it was being put to good use. And that just lit a fire in my heart that has continued to burn for this program. Now, what you talk about, and we'll get more into it, of course, but I know during the pandemic, I was out, to, you know, when the lunches were being prepared, you know, by the fine cafeteria staff, uh, people would drive up and take uh, their lunches home today pretty well. That went quite a bit during the pandemic, and we appreciate that. But your program, it sort of runs, what, separate from the schools? Is that right? Yes, we are completely separate from the school system. And, um, while we are housed at First Baptist Church, it is not strictly a First Baptist ministry. Um, we have churches all over the county that contribute monetarily. They volunteer. Um, but we're, we're housed at First Baptist because the three ladies that started this just so happened to be at First Baptist. And so we have a room in the basement uh, donated from the, or the church lets us use. We have all of our food. Um, and... We are in no way affiliated with the school system. They, uh, the school board voted to allow us permission to um, feed these children, but we are not part of Benton County Schools. Okay. What sorts of food items uh, might the kids get to uh, carry them through the weekend? We have, <laughs> I'm gonna start, in our, in our room we have totes that go from one end to the other and so when you pack you go down and get one item from each tote so in my mind I'm going down these totes <laughs> we have cereal we have pop tarts we have fruit chews applesauce um, fruit in gel we can't send anything home that's a liquid so we have fruit in the jello um, pudding cups cheese and crackers of some sort. It might be goldfish. It might be Cheez-Its. Um, peanut butter and crackers, peanuts, granola bars, Nutri-Grain bars, and some sort of chip and some sort of cookie. Um, we have to make sure that, <coughs> excuse me, whatever goes home does not have to be refrigerated. 
does not have to be heated up and that a preschool student could open on their own because we feed preschool through um, through high school age students so we have to make sure that the food is accessible for all ages yeah well you mentioned the pandemic and how that was an eye-opener and I think it was for me as well because I did go out to the school and see the process that they were going through and it just really hit me you know were it not for the uh, school lunch meals and the breakfast programs in our schools then some kids would not get any meal all day that is I didn't realize how true that was but when I had the the blessing to deliver these food bags along with so many other volunteers these kids when they knew we were coming were waiting for us on, on, on at their front door now are you serving in our school system are you serving uh, pre-k all the way through high school through seniors or is there just a certain age group among the children that get the food we serve pre uh, kindergarten through eighth grade at holiday we serve all of big sandy and then in benton county in camden we serve preschool through fifth grade and then second harvest has a program that goes into camden junior high and camden high school so they are taken care of under um, second harvest i would imagine the process in the baptist in the uh, first baptist church basement over there i would imagine that's a process when you're preparing the packets or the uh, boxes that's not the right term but when you prepare the uh, products to go out to the individuals i imagine it takes several to help with that it does <laughs> and um we've averaged about 50 volunteers for the last um i've been in i've been director for i think this is my seventh or eighth year now and we've averaged about 50 volunteers um but we we did we took a big jump in students last year between last year and this year um and i think that's a direct directly related to the pandemic and people losing their jobs and, and needing more help and so we are in need of some more volunteers for the upcoming school year <laughs> we've we've got enough to get us through this school year but it to continue to sustain the large number of students that we're feeding it will require some more help now at certain times of the year when we have you know like a fall break a spring break is coming up in the system very very soon we know in the next two or three weeks we know that holidays do you even do more at that time or you know when the kids are going to actually be out of school for a week or so we will send home um, a double packed bag so two weeks worth of two weekends worth of food in in one bag um, but we haven't gotten to where we can send home for the entire week just because of the size and it's got to fit in these kids backpacks so but we do we will send home a double portion of everything when we know they're going to be out um, for a break now you've got to have funding for this uh, magnificent program so where does your funding come from this is where i 100 percent give god the glory because and he has showed up and showed out because we operate 100 percent off of donations and we never know from one year to the next how much money we're going to have but we have every single year since this program began in 2008 have been able to add students consistently since since this program began and um, we are at 325 students and just to give you an idea of how much that cost last year um, we spent right at thirty thousand dollars on food for the kids this year with inflation and also with we took a large jump uh, we were feeding 200 and trying to remember we added last spring 200 and i want to say 94 and then or 274 and now we're at 325. Um, we are looking at um, right at fifty thousand dollars this year on food and as we have seen recently in the news with the things going on in the world right now and it uh, started even before the ukraine ukraine situation we know that but uh, food cost and uh things we pay for on a regular basis that's skyrocketing and it had it had affected us <laughs> in many ways um we in the past to get our food we would load up a trailer and volunteers would volunteer their truck their time and those who went to sam's to pick up our food it was an all-day thing they would bring out huge pallets wrapped in 
um, plastic wrap. They would unpack it, unload it, bring it back to the church, unload it. It was an all-day thing. And once we started having shortages, they put um, limits in the store where you could only get two packages of peanut butter and crackers where we needed 92. So we had to result to online ordering where we still run into issues. And we've had to, um, we have items shipped now where we've run into shipping delays. We've run into damaged items. We've run into um, being out of stock on things that we need. So it has taken a lot more volunteers. Um, I've had people say, well, I'm running to Nashville. I'll check the SAMs at Nashville and I'll call you. Or um, we've added on a Costco membership. That's the only two things that we pay for with fuel funds that is not directly for food. We pay for a SAMs membership and we pay for a Costco membership. But everything else goes 100% to buy food. No, nothing else. It buys nothing else. <laughs> now, First Baptist Church in the basement that we've talked about, but do you get a lot of support maybe from uh, the other churches out in the community? And I know you could use more. Yes, yes. The other churches in this community, and I, I don't want to name names sure. for fear of leaving yes. somebody out. I understand. <laughs> but I have been going around recently and speaking to them to thank them uh, in person. It's been a hard couple of years, and their support has not wavered. Their um, donations have continued. They continue to contact me to volunteer to help in any way. Um, and I also have in, in the works some churches that have contacted me that are going to be new to, to the program and wanting to help us out in the coming school year. So I'm really excited um, to build some new relationships with some of the other churches in the community. It has to be very rewarding to you and the volunteers that you work with uh, when you deliver food uh, to a home out there. It's got to be very rewarding to see, you know, when the kids or the parents come in to greet you at the door and things like that. It's got to be very rewarming and heartwarming. It, it was heartwarming. Um, and without the pandemic, we would not have seen that because um, normally these these kids are anonymous to, sure. to us. Um, and we can go through that at, at some point about how the kids are chosen um, and how it's distributed, but um, for the most part, these bags go home in their backpacks on Friday afternoon, and no one knows who these children are unless these children identify themselves. So with the pandemic, a lot of our volunteers were able to put at least one face, one or two faces with these bags, and it made it a lot more personal. Um, and I know that we had some, some children of volunteers that were able to help and it was good for them as well to see that they were making a difference and that they were helping to to feed somebody that may not have food if they're not at school and it was it was a very humbling heartwarming eye-opening experience for all of us who were involved in that well i'll tell you what let's do right now let's get into the uh, distribution part of it how the kids are chosen we'll do that in just a moment but it's time for us to take a break in the other studios your old student uh, luke crutchfield is in there and he needs to play a sponsor a uh, message from our sponsor apex bank and when we come back we'll continue the conversation stay with us Apex Bank of Camden proudly serving the Benton County community since 1931. In recent years, through growth and expansion, we've taken that same local community spirit into other markets. Today, with over 20,000 customers across Tennessee, our business philosophy remains the same. Local people making local decisions, serving our friends and customers, and investing in the communities that we serve. Here for you yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Apex Bank of Camden, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Welcome back to the second portion this morning of Operation 7570. Jenna Patton is our guest in our studio today, and we've been talking about a program to help uh, the uh, children, particularly on weekends when they're out of school and may need some uh, nourishment, of course, and we're talking about the program known as the FUEL Program, and uh, in case you joined us late, that is an acronym, and explain, Jenna, once again, what the FUEL what that really means, what it those means initials stand for. Right? Filling up on Emmanuel's love is what the acronym stands for. Okay. And a summary of what it's all about again for newcomers, new listeners, and watchers today. Of course. We send um, bags of food home on the weekends to food insecure children um, throughout Bitten County. Um, 
we are in all schools in Camden, all elementary schools in Camden, um, all of Holiday, Big Sandy, and then Head Start. Okay. Now, we were talking before the break about how the uh, food is distributed and how children may be chosen for the program. Take us through that process, eligibility requirements. Okay. Um, when we contacted, or when the ladies who started this contacted the school system about coming into the school system, um, of course, we it went before the school board we had to um it has to be an equal opportunity so we have a form that goes home at the beginning of the school year every year to every child um parents have the choice to to fill it out and send it in um or not um once these forms come in the teachers turn them into the office and then the principals and teachers will determine because sometimes we have parents who fill things out on accident, didn't mean to. So they will go through and determine which ones are in need of this of these bags and which ones may have filled it out on, on accident. Um, and in the past, um, as a committee, the fuel committee would we'd look at our funds for that year and tell each school, okay, this is this this is the number for this year. And so. At, up until this year, they would they would pick um, a certain number of students, and though the volunteers for fuel, that's all we knew. We knew a number. We didn't know names um, because it's completely anonymous. And this year is the first year that, due to the support of so many people, we were able to feed every student that was in need that turned in that paper in August. Um, so then we just have a number. We post the number. I have schedules for each school. And who, whoever's packing for, for example, elementary, they walk in and they see they pack 100 bags. So they know that they're feeding 100 children at Camden Elementary. But it, like I said, it's completely anonymous because to pr absolutely to Privacy. take care of these. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. We understand that. Is there room for growth can you perhaps uh, maybe when the new school year starts in August in just a few months, is there room for expansion and serving more? We sure hope so. We, we um, as a committee, we're looking at um, expanding. Um, there's a possibility of opening up another room in the basement at the church that we're looking into. Um, and as long as, as long as we have volunteers and as long as, we have donated the money there to do it. We will continue to serve as many kids as we can for as long as we can. And as time goes along, then new people come in to help you with the program and uh, personnel who have been with the program decides it's time to uh, step back and let uh, other folks come in and, uh, you know, maybe take their place. They still have a passion for the program, of course, but uh, as we go along, as we evolve, that happens. But the newcomers that come in and may have helped you, Jenna and all the other volunteers, I guess, when they come in for the first time, I guess they may be astonished or just overwhelmed at what goes on. Yes, <laughs> yeah, and it can be overwhelming. It's It's been, like I said, it's been a tough couple of years, and because we, we come in and we may be completely out of, for example, I can't find peanuts. Go figure. <laughs> There's a peanut shortage. So we have to find something that we can uh, substitute, and they come in, and it can be overwhelming the number of bags that have to be packed and then getting them there and and it, it, it is a little bit of a time commitment but it is it is such a blessing to see how excited these kids get and I have the privilege um, of being in the school system and so I will see kids on Friday afternoons who look in their backpacks and are so excited to see what they have and it makes every bit of the the truck you know the stress of it it makes every bit of it worth it can people of course monetary donations of course are always accepted but can people just bring items uh, you know that you went over this truck can they just bring those type of items in or would you rather just have money we just do money because like i said we when we discussed this with the school board we had certain guidelines that we have to follow and we want to make sure that um, food is in date and it's in unopened, prepackaged, and we have specific items that we can send. Um, so just to make that easier, um, 
we do not accept donations of food. We uh, we accept donations of money, and then we purchase the food from Sam's, um, from Costco, sometimes from Walmart if we if need be. Um, we also take donations of um, Walmart sacks, used grocery sacks, because that's what we pack um, the food in, our uh, plastic grocery sacks. Um, but at this time, we do not have where we can um, accept food donations. Do you pay attention, and I guess you have to to a certain extent, but let's just say food items that you get, Jenna, expiration dates. They all have expiration <laughs> dates, and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll admit I've drank milk two or three days after the <laughs> expiration date. I've ate a candy bar after it expires, but uh, do you pay attention to that? We do. We do, and I'm sure at some point something has slipped by us. <laughs> But um, when we order new food, we make sure that I have some fantastic volunteers who are in charge of my inventory. And if you're watching, <laughs> could not do it without you. But they make sure that the older inventory is scooted to the front and the newer items are put behind so that we use up um, food before it goes out of date. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been a good discussion today and what are some things uh, you have a good uh, talking point list right here and I appreciate that but what are some things we're missing what are some things you know that I haven't asked you that you want to tell the public about concerning the fuel program this is available to anybody to volunteer um, you can get involved um, by helping pack bags you can get involved by helping deliver bags to the schools we having someone to help unload food when it's delivered and inventory food and um, like I said for those who are not physically able uh, monetary donations are that's how we operate 100% we are um, we're not a budget line item um, for any organization we just operate off of um, donations and we, <laughs> we, we, we do have a need for the coming up school year. And so I, I don't know if I'll give you my contact information if we post it somewhere on the page. Um, but I can also give the church's phone number. Yes, by all um, means do that. To call 584-6061 um, anytime Monday through Thursday. That is the First Baptist Church office. And Miss Geneva would be glad to get you in touch with me. Um, if you would like to just go through the process and see how it works, or if you have any other questions, um, I would be more than happy to answer them, to take you through the process. Um, if anyone is interested in donating, um, you can just fill out a check to FUEL, F-U-E-L, program, and then mail it to uh, First Baptist Church at 269 Post Oak Avenue. And we have our own separate banking account so everything that's in our checking account is strictly for fuel um just miss Lori jordan at uh, first baptist just helps keep my <laughs> my bank account in check for me and balances everything for me so you know i think we've had donna vick on the program several times and just the overall need of a food getting it out to uh, benton county it's not just children but maybe their parents and adults i mean it's just overwhelming what is it one the hunger one out of every six one out of every seven i forget those yeah. exact stats but i mean you know we've had food drives you've been a part of food drives before i was out a month ago at uh, missionary grove and just saw the cars lined up and there is a need there is a need out there to yes get uh, food to a uh, Hungry Bitten Canyons. Yes, yes, there is, and this is just this is just one of the ways to get involved. Like like Flash said, there are so many ways, but being an educator and being in every school in the system, there is a great need, a great need, and this is a program that I pray continues because it is it is reaching so many so many children. As we go along right now, and it's been a terrible terrible two years. We all know that, but as a part of our school system right now do you think we're getting better are we trying to you know i think we're always going to have to contend with COVID, but are we trying to move away and get somewhat back to normal <laughs> we're trying we're trying and 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 it's taken a toll on these kids just like it's taken a toll on us as educators and us as parents and these kids are resilient and i have been amazed at at how they are are bouncing back and how they are coming back and 
wanting to get back to normal. They're, they're, they appreci- they're appreciating things that maybe they didn't appreciate as much before COVID. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure that's true. And from time to time when you have your volunteers out there, do you maybe use the assistance sometimes of maybe some high school students, juniors and seniors? Do they ever come out and help you with any of these type of uh, programs? We do have um, Miss Sarah Camuzzi at the high school has a work-based learning class, and they come pack every Wednesday, and she'll pack Every week it changes. Some weeks she'll she's packed every school for me before, but we're at such a high number now um, that's that was too time consuming. So she her kids pack several bags uh, every week for me, um, and because of because of the time they they're not able to deliver them. But those high school students do come and pack. We've had um, we have youth groups that pack. We have. Um, young boys and young girls programs at churches that will come pack bags and so that's an option too if there is um if there is a youth group that would want to come pack or if we've had um some ladies groups from different churches the the garden club was so great to pack for us the veterans um i do especially want to mention the veterans they um they (laughs) drove to Jackson countless times with their trailer and hauled food and and many of them I can call at the drop of a hat and say hey somebody's sick can you go pack a hundred bags and deliver it today and they have been amazing to help and of course we appreciate all these volunteers that help in so many many ways and I was just thinking here talking about maybe some high school kids might it be a good way for them maybe to get some extra well, I call it extra credit, but some extra points to put on their resume when they get ready to apply for a college and things like that? It absolutely would be. It would be a, a fantastic way to get some community service um, hours to get involved that way. Um, and one thing that I failed to mention, um, going back to uh, the kids, if you're interested in sponsoring a child, that is a possibility. Um, it has gone up, again, due to inflation, but right now we're, it's about $4 per bag. And we're looking at around $150 a year sponsors a child. $150 one year will feed one child the entire school year. And uh, that's a very, very beneficial. I did not know that was part. Of, that could be part of the program, but someone might want to take advantage of that as well. I appreciate you coming in, and uh, you know we appreciate you coming in. You've had laryngitis the past couple of days, but you're much, much better. And we're going to shorten the program a little bit today from what we usually go, so you can still rest up for the weekend and be ready to go Monday back with all the things that you do. But uh, anything here in closing, once uh, again, my friend. I, again, I just want to thank all of those who have been so supportive and who have have been through it been with us through this throughout the years and i uh, look forward to talking to or meeting with anyone who is interested in getting involved in this this program it is an absolute blessing and once again in case anybody would like to volunteer their time or maybe just send a donation uh, what can they do uh, you can call First Baptist Church office at 584-6061, and Miss Geneva or anyone who works in the church can give you my contact information. Um, you can mail a check made out to Fuel, F-U-E-L, to 269 Post Oak Avenue here in Camden, and that will be deposited directly into our Fuel checking account that goes 100% to buy food for these kids. Well, thank you very much. Thank you so much for being a guest this morning on Operation 7570. Thank you for all the great work you do with the Fuel program and in our school system. We appreciate you and your family so very, very much, and uh, we'll have you and maybe some more folks in the studios back uh, before too much longer then. We'll look forward to the next time. Sounds great. Thank you so much. That's our program this morning, ladies and gentlemen, on Operation 7570. We thank Miss Jenna for being our guest today on the program to talk about a very worthwhile project going on, and of course we will have this program up uh, recorded in case you missed her. It will be up on our Facebook page in the archives, and we hope that you'll take advantage of it. Well, have a great weekend. Stay tuned next for Luke with the Bargain Auction. We'll see you next Saturday morning on Operation 7570. Good day, everybody. For more than 85 years, Apex Bank of Camden has built a tradition of local people serving local people. Although there have been changes over the years,